Once upon a time, long ago and far away in the sunny land of Italy, there was a happy and prosperous city, Milan, ruled over by a wise duke named Prospero. Prospero was a good and generous duke. He listened very carefully to everything his subjects had to say to him. And he gave very good advice for anyone who needed it. His people thought that he was the best duke that Milan had ever had. Everyone loved Prospero. They also loved his beautiful wife. When the couple had a daughter, Miranda, the whole city was delighted for them. A huge celebration took place with Prospero making sure that everybody had a wonderful time. A feast was provided. The freshest of fruit, the most flavoursome vegetables, the most succulent of roast meats, fragrant ices, wonderful drink and great entertainment. not get any better. And that was true. It could only get worse, which it did when Prospero's wife died. A great sadness fell over the city. An even greater sadness fell over Prospero. He locked himself away in the library, deep inside his palace, talking to no one. One day, his brother Antonio came to him. Prospero, you must stop this. The city needs you. Nobody is ruling. No one is making decisions. You have to become Duke again. Prospero sat in silence, unspeaking, till he whispered, No, you do it. So, Antonio did. Secretly, he was delighted. He'd always been jealous of his brother and the power he wielded and the respect he had. Inside the library, Prospero fell in love again, but not with any living creature. No. In that library was a small collection of books, their spines glimmering with golden letters, their pages dancing with strange images, books of magic. And it was the magic within those pages that captured his heart. Prospero began to spend more and more time in his library, his face buried in his precious books. Books that seemed to speak to him, leading him further and further into the world of magic. The more he read, the more he learned. And soon he was performing real spells that conjured up real magic. He wasn't just performing tricks. It seemed to be something much deeper than that. At the same time, Antonio was finding that the people of Milan did not respect him in the same way that they did Prospero. He was infuriated. He was the one doing all the work. And yet, they still loved Prospero. Day after day, Antonio would be out among the people, solving problems, making decisions, and generally being the best possible stand-in duke that he could be. But still, it didn't seem to make any difference at all. The people of Milan would come up to him and ask, Where's Prospero? When will he be coming out to see us again? Finally, frustrated and angry, Antonio could stand it no more. He went to see his old friend, Alonso, the King of Naples. Together, they came up with a wicked plan to get rid of Prospero. And in so doing, make Antonio the Duke of Milan. One night, the gates to the city were left open by Antonio, and he told all the guards to take the night off. With no one to stop him, in came King Alonso, along with a small army of his troops. In the very dead 
of that night. King Alonso's army stormed into the palace, grabbed Prospero and roughly thrust his daughter into his arms. They shoved them out of the palace and took them down to the docks where a boat was waiting. But it wasn't just any boat. It was a boat especially prepared by Antonio for his brother. He had filled the tiny craft with holes. Prospero and Miranda were put inside the leaky boat and pushed out into the sea. Antonio was sure that he had put enough holes in that boat that it would sink before it reached the horizon and he would never see Prospero again. Finally, he would become the real Duke of Milan. And the boat might very well have sunk had not an old friend and advisor of Prospero's, Gonzalo, decided at great risk to himself to help Prospero. Just before King Alonso's army got Prospero to the docks, Gonzalo hid three crucial things on that boat underneath a piece of sailcloth. Prospero found that Gonzalo had left him food, water, and most important of all, his spell book. With Miranda crying in his arms, the boat began to drift further and further away from the safety of the shoreline. Prospero could see the water clearly rising up within the boat, and he knew they didn't have much time. So he picked up his book of spells and hurriedly began to turn its pages, desperate to find a spell which could save them. Prospero hoped that all that time in his library studying his spells was about to pay off. Magic was the only way to save himself from this terrible situation. Save himself and his tiny little daughter. Prospero began to look through the pages of his spell book more and more frantically. He looked at page after page after page after page after page after page. At last, he found it, the spell of healing. He used the spell and ran his finger over every single hole in the hull of the boat. And then he repeated the spell and he mended all of the rips in the sail. Lastly, he turned the pages of the ancient book to find one more incantation. Gently, he blew into the mended sail. It filled with a strong but gentle wind that blew them over the sea until at last they landed on a small island, halfway between Italy and Africa. 